You are amazing, God. You are wonderful. You are kind. You are virtuous. You are long-suffering. You are gentle. You are meek. You are temperance. All these things you extend toward us. Most of all, your love. This very moment, God, I ask you to touch everybody under the sound of my voice. Those who are streaming live and those who are in the building. Have your way in this place. Move from person to person, from mind to mind, from heart to heart, from emotion to emotion. Let this environment be an amalgamation of glory that we give unto you. Speak a word that will change every situation. Speak a word that will give life. Speak a word that will bring healing. Speak a word that will bring deliverance. God, we love you because the word of God is more than literature. The word of God is life. Breathe on us, Jesus. Have thine own way, O oh God. We love you. God, I decrease that you increase in me. When you say stop, I'll quit. When you say you'll not slow down. And I ask you to give me the mind of the wise. Tongue of the Lord. And we love you. And we give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Every believer, clap your hands and say amen in this place. Hallelujah. I said, every believer, clap your hands. Every believer, clap your hands. Repeat after me. Say, I believe absolutely everything that this book says about my life, my family, my future, my finances, my feelings, and my faith. In Jesus' name, amen. I am going to go to the book of 1 Kings, I believe it's chapter number 18, verses 41 through 46. Eighteen forty-one through 46. Should be on the screen for translations purposes. I think I'm reading from the New Century Version. Um, Apostle McNair set a wonderful tone and a wonderful tempo uh, in the message he shared. And then again, Minister Hines and, 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 and Mrs. Pope said I continued that tempo on Wednesday. And I want to feel right in the groove with that tempo. Because one of the things is that uh, in this day and time in which we currently reside, is that we are in the midst of what uh, the employees, employment sector or the marketplace calls uh, the great resignation. And one thing that uh, COVID has done, it has brought about the mindset that at all cost or at all broken commitments, I am going to live my best life no matter what. I mean, I'm going to travel, I'm going to go on vacation, I'm going to have fun, I'm going to bungee jump, I'm going to rock climb, I'm going to surf, I'm going to swim with the dolphins, I'm going to feed stingrays, I'm going to skydive, I'm just going to do everything that because life is too short and you don't know when you're going to check out. Life is too short to be stuck in a church on a Sunday after Sunday to keep hearing somebody preach. I catch you on the replay, but just let me do my thing. We're going to buy Harley Davidson. The wind is going to blow through our hair. We're going to get a spider. We're going to sit on side by sides. We're, going, we're just going to go hiking trails. We're going to do mountain biking. I mean, we're going to do it all. It's just life is too short just to be in one place. And because of that, there's a thing that people have developed, not PTSD, but PTSD. G, post-traumatic growth syndrome, which simply says, listen, you will be a victim of me living the fullest life that I am going to live, which means that even though I said yes, because life comes first, I'm going to do life. And because of that, watch this, guess what is suffering because of that mindset and mentality? It's called vision. Now everybody has their own vision. And when everybody has multiple visions, it's called what kind of vision? Division. 
Amen? And so, you know, in, in the church of just a century, or not a century ago, a decade ago, vision seems to be much stronger because everybody galvanized around this singular voice to accomplish vision. Now people come to church to get encouragement for their vision. While yet, the corporate vision seemingly sometimes is on life support. Amen? Verse 41. It went away, DJ. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Now go eat and drink because a heavy rain is coming. First of all, you got to know what happened before this. Elijah has called down fire from heaven. He challenged the prophets of Baal. 450 to be exact. Say, so whichever God answers by fire, this is the God. And so if you read the scriptures and study before, you will see that they built an altar both made of wood and the prophets were calling down and, and Baal did not answer. They, even to the point where they were cutting themselves. And Elijah, we mocked him. He said, he said your God must be asleep. So even they, 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 they vehemently called Baal, and so much so they even tore down the altar. But, but then Elijah said, let's rebuild the altar. And even when they're going to rebuild the altar, we're going we're gonna to drench it with water. We're going to dig a trench around it so much so that the water's going to fill the trenches. And he called on the God Jehovah, and God answered by fire. He slapped up the water and the, and the wooden altar. And Elijah took out his sword and slew 450 prophets of Baal. And now he's at verse 41. 42 says, King Ahab went to eat and drink at the same time. First of all, who's not going to listen to somebody who just killed 450 people? At the same time, Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel where he bent down to the ground with his knees between his head. What a peculiar position to be in. Sound like he was birthing something. Then Elijah said to his servant, Elijah said to his servant, go and look toward the sea. Now, the King James said in verse 41, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. for what I hear. Mm. I just told him to go and
Christ. Wise. Sky was covered with they have got. But they can run. So much so, people bet on them running. Called the Kentucky Derby. Right? Then a horse wins multiple times. They're called the triple crown winner. Verse 46. Well, watch this. The Lord gave his... The Lord gave to Elijah who tightened his clothes around him and ran ahead of King Ahab all the way to Jezreel. The word of God for the people of God. You may read it. Uh, uh. We, we hear, we hear. We, we hear about, you know, we should have vision. The scripture talks about vision quite extensively. It says, you know, without vision, people perish, right? Then Habakkuk says, write the vision and, and make it plain so they that hear it may run. Wait, 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 do what? May, 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 may run. That, that, word, that word run, that, that means that, you know, I, I, I'm taking quick action. At it. That's, that's, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. This is going to be a blessing to us. I want to talk to you about the vision gap. Everybody said the vision gap. That there are so many things that are so innumerable that I care not to even mention, but there are so many things that can cause us to experience a gap. In the vision, right? Uh, uh, there, there. So, and watch this. And it's not. It's not all sin. It's not all problematic. It's. It's. It's actually a lot of stuff that makes sense. That causes us to experience gaps in vision. And I want to help us with that today. Is that okay? Hallelujah to God. Because in this entrepreneurial society. You know, can I watch this? Of VPs, manufacturers watching on time. There was a company, man, that everybody wanted to work at. Get your child to work, drop them off at the. Not because they, it was a VP position available, it's because they were part. But everybody wanted to do. You hear me? Um. Appreciate that my team. I don't know how big was it. It got exciting when I was so exciting when I walked into the exciting when I walked into the convention. I walked into the convention center. The convention center is center is I is I saw I saw people grabbing it and running with it. Amen. Ooh. But but I want to talk. We help y'all today. 
What is vision? I'm so glad y'all asked. Y'all asked some smart questions early this morning. What is vision? I asked God to give me, God, give me a, a quick divine download. We, we know what the, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the dictionary says about vision. You know what the encyclopedia says? But God, what is vision? God told me this. He said vision is, div- is a divinely inspired blueprint given through faith. Watch this. Given through faith. Received by faith and executed with faith, which for the vision carrier, everybody said that's me, produces purpose, profit, and posterity. Let me say that again. Very inspired blueprint given through faith, received by faith. And executed with faith, which for the vision carrier produces purpose, profit, and posterity. Posterity is future legacy, longevity. You ever ask yourself, God, what am I supposed to do? Your purpose is in a vision. I could only do what I'm doing now if I was not a part of another man's vision. And watch this. When I started doing what I'm doing now, I was still working another man's vision. And truth be told, this vision is not, watch this, independently or autonomously mine. I'm just continuing. The baton just happened to be in my hand. But the day is coming where I pass the baton. So you just don't wake up and say, ooh, I got a brand new vision that God has never given anybody since the creation of time. Tell them I said passes on. So vision gives you purpose. You want to make money? Be a part of a vision. It gives you profit. Hello? Give you profit. I, I, uh, I was talking with, with one of my sons the other day, and I, I was sitting somewhere, and, and, and there, there are a few, few, few of my, my spiritual kids that can tell you, by them being connected with me, they made some money. Hello? Not prayer. They made actual dollars that they put in the bank. And, and, and by, just the other day, somebody working and being in the vision, somebody came to me, the, vision, the, the visionary, and said, Bishop, I need this. Well, guess what? In the confines of the vision, I said, I got that. Call them. Now, they're going to watch this. Make a profit out of working the vision. You hear me? And so what's happening is the enemy is fooling us into thinking that, oh, well, you need to do you. Do you, boo-boo. <laughs> do you. Do your thing. What's that song? It's your thing. Do what you want to do. I can't tell you who to sock it to. That's most people's theme songs today, right? (laughs) The enemy attempts, watch this, to sidetrack two types of people. Only two types of people the enemy tries to stray away and sidetrack. Y'all want to know what two types of people are? Vision leaders and vision carriers. Only two types of people that enemy is after. What's the first one? Vision who? Say it again. Second one is what? Vision who? Say vision leaders and vision carriers. Why is he after these two types of individuals? God, y'all are asking great questions. Because he wants you to fail at the gap. Bishop, you're talking about this vision gap. What is the vision gap? The vision gap 
It's not a place. The vision gap is a perspective. Woo, God, thank you. I, I, I thought it was great myself when I took the note. <laughs> y'all can smile like you're you ready to fight and we can knuckle up later, but y'all can smile at me a little bit in here. Thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> y'all still you look at me like that? Uh, or y'all gonna stab me down like that? Like, like, oh, I got you. When you don't smile, that means it must be hitting you. That's cool. The vision gap is, someone say it's a perspective. What is perspective? A perspective is how you see it. This, this is how I see it. It's a perspective that is operated from when vision is given. Watch this. And the current process of working towards it is too long. Y'all didn't catch that. It's a perspective that you operate from when vision is given and when you start working it, it's taking too long. What does that mean? You hear me say, hey, this church is going to grow. In six months, we're still looking at the same people win. Hmm? You look, I'm coming out of debt and it seems like when? You, God going to bless you. You can come from paycheck to paycheck. When? When is it going to happen? Oh, you ain't going to be single long. Your boy is on the way. When? It's been eight years. And it's still me and the children. <laughs> when? Hello? You'd have been prophesied to. You'd have been prayed over. I mean, you'd have had the all blessed. You'd have gave extra offering. You'd have served on committees. You'd have sat on boards. You'd have sung in the choir. You've ushered. You've volunteered more than you want to. And you, you've given yourself over to God. And it still hasn't happened. Tell somebody that that's called the gap. And so but it's, like, it's like when you first join a community, when you first join, like when we moved in our community, man, we, we baked brownies for 29 houses. Well, I didn't bake them. I uh, had somebody else do it. I gave them to them. Yeah, good. Excited about the community. We still are. Well, I love our community which, where we live. Neighbors are great. Neighbors are great. It's like when you join church. How many of you remember when you first joined the nation? How many remember when you first joined Power Nation? I mean, man, were, you, were you excited? Were you on fire? For God, for your pastor, for the people, you were just ready, huh? Wow, Bishop, this is great. Part of a church. I mean, you were ready to rock and roll. A year passed. You, you found the members that weren't so couth. A message or two I preach hits you in the gut. You learned a few scriptures, and now I became controversial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's called sliding in the gap. Or outside life gets better. You, you get a boo. Then boo becomes bae. Bae when you get married. <laughs> then now you got bae. Now you got babies. <laughs> and now I can't do all of that because I have other obligations. And you slide. In the gap. Or you become a boss, girl boss, entrepreneur. And, and, and now you, you don't have time. You have meetings. Now you have a team of your own. Now you watch this. Now you can sit into Bishop, I understand how you feel now. You've been in business two years. I've been pastoring going on 20. And you really understand how I'm, I, I, I get you. You're on my level now. That's called the gap. You got me? And, and so, and so, I'm not saying that, 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 but let me tell you something. Can I just be honest and transparent? My former pastor, I outgrew. When I say out, I like physically outgrew my former pastor. Matter of fact, the fellowship was a part of, we became the largest church in the fellowship. But you will never hear me say, I'm on your level. Bishop. Spain, I understand, Bishop, how you feel. No, I don't. And if he was still living, I would still say, I, never, I will never understand how you feel. I am not on your level. Never will be. 
I don't care if my church gets 30 times as big as yours. I will never be on your level. I, I, don't, I, I haven't seen what you've seen. I'm not in your generation. I don't understand it. That's why I, I, that's why I honor you for being in my life to continue to keep me connected to that era. It's called valuing elders. Amen? Hallelujah. Most of there are some members, I'm old enough to be your dad for real. And I get, I get you. No, you don't. Get, I got a daughter your age. How you get me? You get, you get what I'm saying? It makes sense. It's, it's just, somebody said it's sliding in the gap. And when stuff take too long, you done been here for a while. Or you watch this, you've seen transition. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not all easy, is it? Because when you got here, everybody was smart, but all of a sudden, you, you just happened to step into the kitchen where they cook. And you didn't know that the floor was greasy. That dishes had to be washed. That the steaks had to be cut. That they come in as a big slab, but you got to cut them jokers down so you don't choke nobody who feasts on it. Duh. Woo. And when you work in the kitchen, you leave smelling like it. God, God. Get hungry. Oh my God, where you been? My dad used to work at a company called TRW. And I still remember the oil smell from the machinery that he worked in because it was all in the clothes. That's why they gave him uniforms. I still remember the smell to this day of what a CNC machine smells like because I remember what my dad smelled like. I, I still remember it because he smelled like what he did. Good God Almighty. As a believer, there's no way that you can get away from doing what God has called you to do. Because after a while, you've been in it for, you will smell like what you do. I don't care what makeup you put on, what dress you change into, what suit you have, what sneakers you buy. You just smell like what God made you to be. Woo! And so you, you slide in the gap and so... And so when you slide in the gap, there is a possibility that you will experience what I like to call, here's another thing God gave me, vision fatigue. Someone say vision fatigue. Vision fatigue occurs when the manifestation of the vision is perceived as being too long. What does vision fatigue affect? Vision fatigue affect. It affects your spiritual, your mental and even your physical attributes as a vision carrier. Man, I've been carrying this thing too long. It's time to put this down let somebody else carry this. I'm tired. Ooh, you know what we say? We don't say I have vision fatigue. We call it something else. Burnt out. I am just burnt out. I'm just burnt out. Can I just, can I help you stay, keep it 100 with you? Can I keep it 100 minutes behind? Why is it that we'll burn out of church but not burn out of work? I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm burnt out. Can't keep my check. I'm, I see y'all. Let me take six months off. I'm just tired. I'm burnt out. How many, how many weeks, how many days a week you go to work? Average five, seven, average, average, average work week is 40, 40 hours. How many, 40, if you work 40 hours, throw your hand up at me. If you work 50, throw your hand up at me. 60, above 60. Whoa, look at these hands. I'm talking about work. Don't put church in there. Okay, all right, here it is. All right, all right, here it is. All right, 40 hours a week. Okay, let's do a little bit of this. Uh, 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 20 hours. You work 20 hours a week. Throw your hands up at me. 20 hours? Cool. All right. Where you work at, buddy, if you don't mind me asking? Got Cypress Glen. You use 20 hours a week. Gotcha. You can be my baseline, 20 hours. 30. Between 20 and 30. Let me see your hands real high. Between 30 and 40. Good. Between 40 and 50. Gotcha. Between 50 and 60. Good. 60, 60 and beyond. Great. Here it is. Here it is. All right. 
Uh, church, attending church, uh, one to two hours a week. Show of hands. Ha, 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 I need some time. Uh, two to four hours a week. Two to four, two, attending, attending church, two to four hours a week. Okay, hold on now, wait a minute, okay. All right, let me stop, let me, let me explain this real good. A, a, attending church, including streaming, reading your Bible, praying, studying. The, I'm, 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 don't, don't play with me now. I ain't talking about your grace over your food. I'm talking about you really sitting down, stopping everything. I'm not talking about the Bible app. You read the scripture in 30, 20 seconds. Not that. I'm talking about intent time now. One to two hours a week, including worship experience. Thank you. Two to four hours a week. Four to six. Eight to ten. Okay, cool. I know my AV guys ain't going to go up. Ten to twenty. Twenty to forty. 40 to 60, 60 to 80, 80 to 120. Nobody in here hit the baseline of 20 hours of walking with God. But we are the first place that say we got too much of it. Now, that was based on y'all little statistic. Nothing I gave you. I just went off the hands. But we allow less than, matter of fact, I said less than, because nobody went from 10 to 20, less than 15 hours a week to cause fatigue. But we can work 50 hours a week and say, hey, do it all over next week. You know why? Because of the perspective. Work gives us benefit. That's why we endure it. Even though we don't like it. Gotta live, Reverend. Gotta eat, Reverend. Yes, you do. But we don't see that same benefit from God. Well, he woke us up to my head, do it again the next day. Go call the family members who thought the same thing and went into the room and got no response this morning. Can I tell you something? Somebody didn't wake up today. I heard the other day that somebody is praying to have your problems. Because your problem is an upgrade from their lifestyle. Who God, help me here. So we get vision fatigue. I tell you, it occurs when we think it's taking too long. It affects our, our spiritual, our mental, and physical attributes being vision carriers. But watch this. There's a gap in this text. I, I love this text because it's, it's not that Elijah has beaten 450 prophets. It's not that he's on his way to, uh, to Mount Carmel to get down in the birthing place. We see what happens. We see even what happens at the end. The storm comes. But there is a gap in between him on the Mount Carmel and then the servant seeing what he heard. Somebody said there's a gap. <sighs> because there's a length of time when Elijah hears rain and when the servant sees it. Hmm. <laughs> Verse 43 says, Elijah told the servant, go and look toward the sea. And watch this. When the servant went and looked toward the sea, he saw nothing. Almost make Elijah look like he is a lying prophet. He doesn't know what he's talking about. 
He need to go back to the school of the prophets. He need to go back to his mentor. He need to go back to seminary. He need to study his Bible some more. Learn some more Latin, Greek, and Hebrew because you got it wrong. You don't sit me somewhere and there's nothing. Sometimes when you when God gives you a word and you get home, by the time you get home, it's going to be turned around and everything is still face forward. God is going, you hear it over, God's going to bring you out of what you're in. And you leave home and you leave the altar and you're excited. You're ready to shout. You're ready to dance. Break out in a praise like you've never had before. Only two weeks later, you're still in it. Hello? God's going to use us to affect the city. He's going to change. And next thing you know, glory to God. You, 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 you see somebody that used to be sitting beside, they're no longer here. What? Something ain't right, Bishop. You, you, your, your life ain't right. You must be sinning. Uh, something wrong with the bishop now. You better check on him. Look, watch him close now. Watch him. He, he got a little sin with him. Something ain't right. If he, because if we were right, we, we, we wouldn't be going through this. And truth be told is the reason why we're stuck here until you stop thinking like that. Because God would rather you affect nobody with your cancer. But listen, it's better to, I, I can cut out one versus a hundred. Because what if that attitude got to 200 people versus the two you got to? Oh, man, this is heavy today. Isn't it? Watch this. So here, here's, here it is. Mr. Teresa, you asking these good questions. Well, Bishop, how do I overcome Vision fatigue, number one, so I can navigate the vision gap. How do I overcome vision fatigue so I can navigate the vision gap? I got three things for you. Three things for you. What's this? Number one, you got to know the source of where the vision came from. You got to know that where the vision came from, it authentically was God-given. You got to believe that your pastor is a man of God. Oh, God. Number one, above all else, come hell or high water is what they say. Now, listen, I may not agree with everything you say, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that you are a man of God. Because what you said in my life, yes, it has worked. What you prayed in my life, yes, it has worked. What you've given me through the word, yes, it has worked. So I got enough history to know that you are a man of God. It's like, watch this. My mechanic changes my oil in my car. Average oil changes only twice a year. Average oil cost is about $125. You know, it's that synthetic oil. So you don't need to go to, uh, six months or 12,000 miles, whichever one comes first. And so it's average about two to twice a year. And so when the thing comes on, you know, time for oil change, I gladly make the schedule and I go in, leave my car, pay for the $120. I shake my mechanic's hand, say, man, can't wait to see you next week. He's a good mechanic, never led me wrong, always changed my oil. My car runs fine. I'm happy with him. I know I got a history of 15 years that my mechanic is a good mechanic. And then watch this. When the fuel pump went out of my mechanic, I took the car to my mechanic. He said, watch this. It's not going to be $120. It's going to be $1,200 per fuel pump. What? Do you know the first thought that came to my mind? He must be crazy. Let me go to another mechanic. Because watch this. What he just told me costs too much. But while he kept me running, <laughs> he was a good mechanic. He, I, 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 I recommended him to everybody. But as soon as something instrumental broke down in me, and he said, this is what's going to cost you to fix it. Oh, you must be a bad, oh, you robbing somebody. Oh, let me go find some, let me go to the YouTube mechanic. Let me go buy the Haynes manual. I can do this myself. It's amazing how we become our own pastor when the value of what cost goes up. Uh, yeah, he's the same mechanic. He just wasn't there for all changes, but he was experienced to diagnose problems. 
Your pastor ain't here just to play with you. But God sent us here to diagnose those deep problems. The things you haven't prayed. The things you haven't confessed. The things that's not on your lips. And so when God gets there, you still got to perceive that he is a man of God. That means most time when repeller that come up, I can't shop for a few months. We're gonna have to cook it at home, baby. These fuel pumps was twenty four hundred dollars. We're gonna have to put this on the back burner. We're gonna have to recoup our savings. Same thing with the thing that happened in the spirit with you. Wait a minute, I can't go to this party for a few months. I got to get my mind right. I'm almost about to slip. My foot's on the edge. I'm about to go back to what I used to be. I'm about to go back to thinking how I used to think and how I used to act. My faith is on, and the light's on with my faith. And so I got to give up a few things until I get myself together. Until the anointing oil starts flowing freely. Until I get all the junk out of my mind. I can't text like I used to. I can't hang like I used to. I got to get my scepter. Oh, God. Yeah. So you got to know the source of the vision is authentically God-given. And I can proudly say that the vision here is authentically God-given. Elijah, God's prophet. He's not... The people's prophet. He's God's prophet. Hallelujah to God. He said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. He said, I hear it. God have tuned my ear to the heavens. And I hear the heavens about to release a serious storm. Now the the servant hadn't heard nothing. But Elijah told the servant, go toward the sea and go and look for what I've heard. Mm, Wait a minute. Here's the gap. Verse 43. The servant was excited. Oh man, pastor done sent me on a mission. Yeah, this is good. I was waiting for this responsibility because I've been a faithful member. I've been a good tither and I've been waiting for this responsibility. I show up at every prayer meeting. I give like I'm and I've been waiting for this responsibility. And so watch this. And you get excited and you on your way and you on your way toward the sea. Anybody ever been on your way toward the sea? And then when you get there, it's not as exciting as you thought it was. When you get there, there's nothing. What? Pastor, is this it? I gave up my Wednesday for this. I come, I get up early in the morning on Sunday for this. Ain't nothing. I don't don't even see nobody. Not only did he didn't see what Elijah said, he didn't see nobody. The scripture said he saw nothing. Can you see nothing and still go back? See, this, see, watch this. The gap, really, the servant, I want to make him watch this. The, the protagonist of the text. I want to make him the main character because watch this. It's the, the, the servant shows us the fortitude and the tenacity. When he didn't see nothing, what did he do? He went right back to Elijah. Man of God, your grace, I've done as you've asked. But I see nothing. Whew. God, I, I went all the way to the sea and I looked to the left and I looked to the right and I looked up. And I even looked down to bend to see where the sea meets the sky and I see nothing. Hallelujah to God. The man of God says, I, I know, I know what I've heard. I know what heaven released to me. I know what's about to happen. I just don't need you to go, go back again. 
And he came back the second time. I see nothing. I, I, I know what I've heard, Elisha. Go back again. The Bible says this happened seven times. Seven times that he went back. Six of them he saw nothing. Six of them, he saw nothing. Someone say he saw nothing. Mm. God may be saying, hey, listen, I want you to sow this seed for this certain amount. I want you to be committed to this service for, for, for seven months. Uh, and, and even though the same people come in, I don't see no change. I don't see nothing different. I don't do, do, do. Listen, wait, 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 wait. If God is speaking to you in that manner, I behoove you, mom. Like Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you obey what you hear. If God said, listen, I want you to commit to this, commit to it. Hallelujah to God. Listen, how many of us can say that we can go somewhere six times uh, on this random rogue journey Watch this. After the first time, the second time, I'm still kind of anointed for this. But the third time, my anointing is getting annoyed. My, my, my anointing is getting annoyed. Uh, uh, the third time I go back, you think, watch this, the vision would have changed by now. You know what? I may have sent you to the wrong body of water. This time, get down there, hang a left at the sea. There's another body around the side. But no, go back to the same place where you saw nothing. How many of us would have went back? Hey, Pastor Elijah, listen, this is the third time you send me back to, uh oh, listen, I know what I've heard. Go, oh, Lord. I'll, I'll, watch this, watch this, watch this. All right, Pastor. No, I ain't nothing. I ain't nothing there. Won't nothing there last two times. He is just as crazy. He better be glad he the pastor. I'd have been gone by now. Fifth time? You sure? Cause I got to be to work tomorrow. My kids got a football tournament. I Elijah, we done been out here for a while. And you want me to go back to the same place? What's, that's called vision what? Fatigue. Because watch this. Now it started in my mind. It left my mind and it hit my mouth. Listen, words don't come out before you think them. Lord, have mercy. No, no, no. no. You just up and say that. It, it, no. You thought that. But the, we don't see the servant saying any of that. On the seventh time, whew, he went six times and saw nothing. But on the seventh time, he saw the work. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. What do you mean he saw the work? He came back and told Elijah, I see a cloud. The size of a man's hands. Hands in scripture signify work. Good God Almighty. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you is this. There is a work that's available, but you just have to have the tenacity and the commitment to wait to see. It. He says, I see cloud the size of a man's hand rising from nothing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. In the beginning, God, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Wait a minute. Is this the same God that's moving where nothing is? Where the, where, watch this. The servant saw the beginning. Nothing ain't nothing. Nothing is the beginning. Yo, yo, they just missed what I said. Nothing is not really nothing. Nothing is a place of beginnings. Genesis is called the book of beginnings. And God started in the beginning with nothing. And so Elijah said, if you won't grow as a prophet, let me start you with nothing. Lord have mercy. He said, because 
you got to learn to see where nothing is. Because prophet were called seers. And so for the servant, this was a test as a young prophet. Let me see if you can see what I heard. Because it would have been easy to say, I've already seen it as Elijah. You just go see what I see. If you can interpret what I heard with your eyes. God, have mercy. Good God, am I helping somebody here? And so here it is. We can't afford to lose vision in translation. See, it's the job of the vision leader to speak the vision. It's the job of the vision carrier to see it. Number two. Did I give y'all number two? Number two is this. My note, guys. You got to remain consistent. Number one is know the source of the vision is authentically given, given by God. Number two is you got to remain consistent and not allow yourself to be swayed or sidetracked with non-vision related opportunities. Let me read that one more time. Remain consistent. Everybody say consistent. And not allow yourself to be swayed or sidetracked with non-vision related opportunities. There's a lot of things that you can do, but there are a lot of things you shouldn't do because they are not vision centric. There are a lot of people we're wasting our time with. Yeah, we can have a good time with them, but how are they pushing vision forward? God, help me here. And don't get me wrong, you need some friends you can have a good time with. But if you are remaining stagnant for too long, you are being swayed and sidetracked by entertainment versus execution of what you've been called to. Y'all hear me? Don't be swayed or sign. Now, see, these non-vision related things, I'm, they're not really necessarily sin. They can be good things. Extra, extra hustle on the side over here. Let me tell you something. Everything costs something. Amen? You know what? I've been full-time pastor now going on 11 years. And God has blessed me to be a full-time pastor. And I, and I ask every, every I, you know how I treat all the members here at Power Nation? I, I ask you guys to put me in the same category as your cardiologist, as your neurologist, as your OBGYN, as your primary care physician, as your dentist. How many of you, without emergency appointments, see your dentist after you get off work? Your primary care physician, non-related emergencies. He's waiting for you at 6.30 p.m. at the office. And when the office is already cleared out, uh, I had to let the nurse go early, but uh, uh, we, we stay, but, but come on in. We know you had to work. Hmm? Look at, look at little, look at little Alden. She just as sweet as she can be. What them, what them, what them doctors call? Them pediatricians. You will stay in town if your baby got a doctor appointment. I can't make that because my baby, hey, Anthony and, and Nashley, that baby change your whole schedule, won't she? Mm hmm. Because cause has a what kind of appointment? Doctor, watch this, baby not even really sick. It's just a three month checkup, six month check. What is it called? Wellness check. Make sure the baby's growing. Gaining weight, I'm gonna I'm hit you where I'm gonna hit you right here in the ankle. How many of you scheduled a wellness check with your pastor? See if you're growing. On time, you schedule an appointment with your pastor. It when it's an emergency, and he better be there when you call. He ain't married, he ain't got no kids, no life of his own. He better be there because God called him. 
there's a lot of anointed pediatricians that God called to be a pediatrician. But like the man said on five heartbeats, my office I was off from nine to five. Hello? I'm just, I'm just trying to help you because I, 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 God has put me here full time during the day for you. Don't get me wrong. I, I, got, I got to get emergency phone calls and stuff at night. I talk to people after hours. But what I'm saying is, is that if you want to get married, you can meet with me during the day. Right, Tierra? You want counsel? You meet with me during the day. Right, Tierra? You take your lunch break. Right, Tierra? Hello? If you want to meet with me, because watch this. God has given you a specialist for the foot, the podiatrist. He's given you a, prof uh, a professional for the mind, a psychiatrist. And he's called somebody for your soul, your pastor. Or if you want to put an ologist to it, theologist. And we're here for the well-being of your soul. Not just when something go wrong. Amen. And last but not least is, I want to say this, working a God-given vision, this is fighting the fatigue, and I'm closing. Working a God-given vision is not a waste of time. I could be doing something better. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. I could be, I can really, I'm too young for this. My God. Man, you see my chest, bitch, I look good in the wife beat up. Man, I'm too ready to, I'm ready I could be doing something else. Church is for when I'm 50. Not now. I got too much stuff to do. It's not a waste. I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to raise your hand, but how, you ever thought it was a waste of time? I'm just, these, these, my good years, I'm giving to the church. Giving to God. I could be doing something better with my time. That's why I'm still single now sitting here in this church. <laughs> Ain't no men in here. And every time one come in, there five of them fighting for one. <laughs> oh, them, oh, them women ain't know nothing in church. I'm going, I'm going down to the A, hit a club or two or something, you know. Sliding somebody DM me. Give me somebody straight. Somebody who's willing to do what I asked him to do. I ain't no church got time for that. And my singles are in there. Wait, that's what I got to fight against, bitch. I got to level the playing field somehow. You ain't attractive sitting in no collar. What's that? Mm, bitch, we got wet collar. Oh, my God. All my, all my sex appeal is going with these collars. I, can I, I can't make this look sexy in no collar. It ain't supposed to be sexy. It's a discipline. Folk lost their heads. And that's why unordained ministers don't have a full collar. It's the beginning of losing your head, putting your life on the line. And that's why when you get ordained, it becomes a full collar. And so what the, the ministers who actually like Keisha has a tab on, it's the beginning of putting your neck on the line. Because in the days of antiquity, the former pastors lost their life for the gospel. They were put under the guillotine and it came down and they lost their head because they preached to people. But the parishioners got smart and said, we love our pastor too much. Let's make an iron collar and wipe it and, and wrap it in white cloth. Because the law was if the guillotine comes down and it does not cut off your head, it's called double jeopardy. And we can't try you for the same crime twice. And so when the guillotine came down and hit the metal on the pastor's neck, he still could get up and preach the rest of his life. This new modern post-modernity church, it gets on my nerves. Hallelujah. There are some things that are not supposed to be sexy. Some things don't supposed to be carnal. It's supposed to be sacred. And sacred don't mean you look old. Oh, they don't like me today. But I'm coming through here. 
And sometimes we need to cut down the hoop and pull out the desk and pull you up a chair and take some notes because you're drunk on candy. And when real preaching comes, he came. And most of our praise breaks come from the club. Y'all ain't, okay. Am I telling the truth? And y- y'all think that everybody here happy. No, they dancing to Jay-Z. They ain't dancing to God. They hear Jay-Z. They hear the baby. They hear the truth. Huh? They hear Megan the Stallion in the back. Oh, y'all didn't think I knew that? Y'all didn't think I knew nothing about that? Huh? Yeah. Working a God-given vision is not a waste of time. Because God will cause you to make up time. Don't believe me? Read your Bible. God will cause you to make up time. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God-given vision is not a waste of time. As a matter of fact, don't got to tell you As a matter of fact, let me tell you something. When you get in a God-given vision, that's when God will cause you to recoup time. Because we wasted a lot of time before God. Hallelujah. I come to tell somebody who's a baby boomer, you are not too old. I come to tell somebody who's a Gen Z, you know, you're not too young. I come to tell somebody who feels like you're behind time. No, you are not. You are right own schedule. When you work a God-given vision, God will cause you to make up time. How do I know? Because when you read the text, the Bible says that Elijah told the servant, go and look at the sea and see what you see. The servant came back six times and said, I see nothing. But on the seventh time, the servant came back and said, I see a cloud. I see the work of God. I see the hand of God coming out of the sea. Who am I talking to in here? You need to understand it's not over yet. God's about to show you his hand. He's about to show you his handiwork and it's never a waste of time when you work a God-given vision. Tell somebody say, I know that's right. Look at somebody say, I know that's right. You're not too old. You're not behind schedule. You have not missed a flight. You have not missed a bus. It's not expired. You can look at the day and say it's still good. Look at the devil and say it's still good. 85 is still good. 75 is still good. 55 is still good. 45 is still good. 95 is still good. 2005 is still good. 2015 is still good. Today is still good. Somebody holler say it's still good. Let me tell you something. Now I've flown a lot of times. Delta is my choice. I've flown to Atlanta. I've flown to Texas. I've flown to LA. I've flown to Seattle. I've flown to New York. I've flown to the islands. I went across the pond, but I come to tell you something. Sometimes the pilot will come on the air and the pilot will say, we're about 20 minutes behind schedule. He said, but there's no need to worry. No need to fret because we're going to make up time in the air. Is there anybody that knows if a pilot can make up time, God can make up time. Tell somebody say, it's not over until God says it's over. It's not over until I win. It's not over. As a matter of fact, there is another level that God is trying to bring you to. And I want to tell you this. In my text, the Bible says that when the servant saw the hand of God Elijah said that's what I was waiting for tell Ahab get out of here the storm is coming get out of here the wind is blowing get out of here the rain is falling get out of here it's getting bad is there anybody that knows that God will give you a warning before it gets real bad high five your neighbor say neighbor God will let you know before it gets real bad give God a praise in here if you know that God will let you know 
before it gets real bad. God will let you know before you fall. God will let you know before it kills you. God will let you know before you get tired. God will let you know before you fatigue. If you believe that, say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. I'm on my way to my seat. But guess what here, y'all? Guess what here, y'all? I feel my help creeping up on me. The Bible says that Elijah received power from God. Power from on high. Power from glory. Power from Jehovah. Power from Christ. Power from the anointed one. The Bible says he girded his loins and Ahab left on a chariot with his horses. But God will. God will. God will. God will. God will make up time. The Bible says Elijah outran the horses for 30 miles on his feet. He beat Ahab there on his feet. Who am I talking to in here? God is trying to tell you what's supposed to beat you in the natural. I'll make you whoop it supernaturally. If you believe that, say yeah. You've got to praise in here. I'm about to make up for lost time. I'm about to make up for lost time. I'm about to make up for lost time. God's about to give you his power. He's about to give you his strength. Wait a minute. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You shall mount up. With wings as eagles. Wait a minute. You shall run and not faint. I dare you holler out your mouth. I'm not burnt out. First time for me, second time for you. I dare you holler one more time. Say, I'm not burnt out. First time me, second time for you. Last time, let it let God hear. I'm not run out. Because I got anointing in me that helps me navigate the vision gap. That don't pull everything out of me. Oh, hey, I got a lot of more left. Hallelujah to God. It ain't over. I'm ready for the second leg. Anybody ready? Stand to your feet. I'm finished. Oh God, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You know why you shouldn't be burnt out? I don't know why the Lord gave me this last Sunday. At my aunt's pastoral installation service. That's the first Sunday morning, Sunday evening service I preached. It's been a long time. And while I stood up there, God told me to give her a seed. And when he told me to give her a seed, I got a warm feeling in my chest. Like I never got before. And when God, and I said, God, yes, yeah, sure, I'll do that. It just abated. It was like a, it was a calming sensation, just, just like... Love touched me. That's what it was like. Never happened before in my life. It happened, just happened last Sunday. And, and it's okay. Let me tell y'all something. We worrying about people that don't even support. Right? Watch this. God gave me this. And I said it in the, in the service. The people that don't support hasn't stopped you yet. I'm, I'm, I'm done, y'all. What? 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 Right. Anybody ever had a per birthday party? 
You ever had a party that, or a gathering or a celebration? You were expecting somebody to come and they weren't there? Anybody besides me? Imagine this. Did you cancel the catering? Did you tell everybody, y'all, go home? Because, you no. Know, Jennifer's not here. And I'm, I'm, she's not here. I'm, I don't feel like, no, you're not. If I know you all, you say, roll this cake out here. This is my birthday. Now, Jennifer might get a text later. Say, hey, where were you? If she don't respond, guess what? The cater's already been paid for. You've already danced. You done turned a year older. And Jennifer won't even there. What did she stop? Nothing. Right? You are part of God's church. And there may be some folk that you expect. To do and they don't. And don't, and they ain't stopping. Do you know how many people told me I ain't giving nothing else to your church? Do you know how many? You know, I've heard that. I ain't coming back. I, I, I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back. I, I, <laughs> you know what? I I hate to hear that. Lord, what's this? God, what's next Sunday? Um, okay, God, you want me to share this one next Sunday? Cool. All right, honey, you hungry? But when you a long holiday, son, you good? Okay, cool. What did I just? Even though, you know what I went on doing? Went on living, studying the Word of God. Being a husband to my wife, father to my kid, and keep keep on doing. So what am I trying to tell you? Say, non-supporters hadn't stopped anything yet. Let me get your Bible. The Jews didn't support Jesus. There's a scripture in there for that, you know. He went to his own. Let's say you just marriage boy, you know, and his own. Received him not. But did he still go to Calvary? Did he still come out of an empty tomb? Did he still save you and save me and keeping us every single day? So, lack of support is nothing but a sidetrack that you don't have to take because it don't stop anything. Amen. Amen. The vision gap, it exists, but you can navigate it properly. Amen. Amen. When you keep hitting, he said, I'm, oh, I'm tired of you. You've been saying that for a long time. Keep right on saying it. Keep right on speaking it. Keep right on living it. Because God wants to show you his work. Can you touch somebody on the shoulder, arm lengths, hands, whatever, fist bump? Let me pray for this group of people pray for you online. God, you're such an amazing God. As the servant had to repeat the steps seven times. Ooh, shabbat. Not just the steps, but the journey. He stayed consistent. He knew that it was an authentic vision given by God through his man of God. Ooh, he stayed consistent. And he knew his travels were not a waste of time. 